Hey, I'm Jake from Jake Carruthers Tennis Coaching, and today we're going to talk you through the Forehand Masterclass. We're going to go through all the stages of the forehand, starting with the first stage, the grip. Now, the grip is one of the most important things. Uh, this will help you with whether you hit the ball flatter or whether you hit with more topspin. So it's really important we uh, get the right grip for you. Now, Roger Federer, he plays with an Eastern grip. So in terms of his racket, he's around here on the racket. And what you'll see is my string face is a bit flatter. So when I hit my shot, the ball will come through the court much flatter because the angle of my racket isn't as steep, yeah? So Roger Federer, he's more of an Eastern swing, which will give him a flat, faster forehand. Okay, the next grip to talk through is semi-western. Semi-western would be if you put the palm of your hand straight through the middle. Now, if you see here, you can see my angle of my racket becomes steeper. In semi-western, when I finish up here or when I brush the ball, I'm gonna get much more spin, but the angle's not so steep that I won't keep power. So most of the pros currently play with the semi-western grip. And the other grip, is uh, full western, which is further round. So it's further round the grip here. This is what Nadal uses. And you'll see here, his racket angle is so steep. So when Nadal hits, he's gonna have to hit his contact point quite high. And also he's gonna have to really accelerate through here. Now he's really strong and get away with it, but a lot of players, that's too tricky. The grip I would recommend is semi-western, so the one with your hand in the middle. It's the one that most of the pros play with. Um, and if you want to really improve your forehand, I'd recommend trying this grip. If you are eastern, a full western, and you've always been that way, don't change your grip now. There's no point. Uh, you're used to that grip. Uh, and you can still do things with this grip. But if you're starting now and you want to improve your tennis, I'd say semi westerns probably the grip to go with. Okay, so we've touched on the grip. We now move on to the next part, which is really, really important. And this is the ready position. So if you see uh, the pros on, on court, they're already currently, as you'll see in the videos that we're putting up, they're already lined up in their forehand grip. So their ready position is now in their forehand grip. So they're wide with their stance, they're strong in the legs, and they're actually more based towards their tiptoes. So they're not heels down. This is a slow position. So we want tiptoes up, nice strong base with legs nice and wide and powerful. And then you'll find a forehand grip. So I'm gonna to go to my semi-western grip, which we talked about earlier, and try and keep the racket above my wrist. So I'm in a nice strong position. I'm already in semi-western and the racket is out in front of me. Why? Because 60 to 80% of pros are hitting forehands more than their backhand. So they're hitting 60 to 80% of their shots on their forehand side. So we can already try and be ready for that forehand all the time. So I've got my grip up here and the things that we can do from here is very quickly get into our next phase. So from here, it's just a quick turn. And if we're hitting more forehands, then we definitely want to be faster into our forehand position. Okay, so we've looked at our ready position. We know that we have to be in our semi-western grip already. Uh, the next stage, which all the pros are currently doing, is a unit turn, and it's a strong unit turn. So the idea of a unit turn is to try and rotate our shoulders, our core, so that they engage in the shot, and also start to load up our legs. So if you see the pros, we'll show you all the videos next to this, but currently, they're all in their forehand grip, and when they get to this first position, this unit turn, they're up to here. So they're coming up to nice and high by their head with their racket, and their bad hand is staying, keeping hold of the frame. Now they're keeping hold until the racket frame gets at least in line with their head before they start to let go. So it will be from here with our semi-western grip, and what will happen is we're trying to hold them to the head height into this position. Now this is tricky. Now activities you can try at home to help this uh, would be activities like this, just look in front of a mirror and see whether you can hold on until the racket gets in line with your head. So you're keeping hold, 
swings towards the floor in your semi-western grip and you're going to try and get your racket up to head height and keep hold of it. Now I'll just check in the mirror. I try and go hold to head. And every time I do it, I do the same thing. Hold to head. Now it's all about trying to keep things in your head. It is very, very hard learning. But any little rhythm or song or rhyme that we can create will really, really help with this. So we're going to try hold to head. I want you to all try it at home. Just keep practicing this first position. Okay? Everyone got that? That is the unit turn. Okay, so we have now passed on from the unit turn. We're going to our next stage, which I call point and draw the C. Okay? Now this stage is pretty hard. Now to coordinate this is tricky, but if we break it down, it should help. So we know from our unit turn that we were in our semi-western grip and we brought it up by our head. Now at this point here, what you'll see with the pros is they let go. And this hand now points towards the fence or to the side of the court. It doesn't point forwards. At this point, the hand is to the side and at the same time, they're starting to draw a little C at the back of their racket. So it goes unit turn, point to the fence, start to draw your C. Okay, now this is going to help with our acceleration. What we're trying to create is a racket that never stops moving. So if you see here, I'm going my nice unit turn, I'm going to point my hand towards the screen and in the back you'll start to see the shape, the shape of the C. So if you see my racket from here, it's starting to come around and down in the shape of the C. So we've got unit turn, point to the fence, at the same time we're creating our nice C shape. Okay, so things you can do at home. You can get someone to hold a racket at the side of you, just next to you, and you've got to try and go over it, around it, under it, up. Okay? So we go hold to our unit turn, we go let go point, draw the C, and hit the shot. Hopefully that breakdown will really help. Okay, so we've gone past our point and draw the C phase, and now we go to the most important uh, phase of tennis which is the contact point now a lot of players come to me and they say Jake why am I missing why is it hitting the back fence why is it going in the net and it's simple you can have the best form in the whole world you can draw your seat you can do a great unit turn but if when you make contact with that ball your springs are slightly pointing up or if they're pointing way too much down or you hit the wrong part of the ball you will miss that tennis shot. The contact point, without a doubt for me, is the most important part of the phase. So we've got to this hit, we've pointed, we've drawn our seat. We're now getting to our contact point, which we want to try and get right in front of us. Now, if you look at the pros, which I'm going to show you, is to stop on their contact point. It is in front of their body, it's a strong wrist, strong arm, and it's in front of you. So they've done all of this, they've kept their racket the whole time to try and create acceleration which would stop this phase. Now as you can see my legs when I've come round here are starting to lift up as I make contact with the ball. That is starting to put power from my legs into the ball. So legs drive the power, contact points in front. Activities you can do at home, you can just practice from this position. Can you push up? Are you good enough that you can coordinate your legs to lift up at the same time that you swing your racket through? So the swing, the phase that we're creating here would look like this. We know from the start we have our semi-western grip. We know we've got our nice unit turn so the racket goes by our head. We know now we're going to point and draw our C and can we lift our legs up at the same time to create that nice contact point right in front of our body with the ball. This will give us power speed, okay? So the analogy for this would be, can you manage to push and contact in front? So pushing in front. Activities you can do at home, like I said before, just practice trying to get your hand in front and lift your legs at the same 
time. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so we have gone through our contact point. We've done look the, the use of the legs in the contact point. We're now moving on to the last section, which is the finish. So what we're trying to create here is after this contact point with the ball, I've made this point that my racket is going to still go on a nice long path all the way behind me round my back. Now some players catch their racket. I find that's quite a good teaching tip. So if you're here, you've done all your swing, you've hit your contact, you've used your legs. From this point here, you can now come up and catch your racket behind you in a nice strong position. This gives you a nice long swing. Now what lots of players do is they come all the way here, they hit and then they end up breaking. They've just break, broken their whole power chain down to here. So when you finish your swing, we're trying to engage the abs, the rotation, the shoulder rotation, all these things that generate some power. We're trying to make sure that we finish that off. So we've got it, we've activated our legs. Now we need to activate all of the power from the abdominals, the chest, the rotation, to finish up nice and high. So it looks a little bit like a golf swing. Now you do not have to catch. If that is in getting in your way, you can go from here, we can do our nice full swing here, and then this hand can just get out of the way. That's fine, as long as your racket is going all the way round, or you can put it so that it catches straight back into this, as you see Federer sometimes does, and then you can go straight back to your ready position again, lined up ready for your next forehand. Activities that can help you with this, you can do some shots where you actually do all your lineups. You do your unit turn, you do your point of the fence, you do your draw, you see your leg drive, your contact point, and then you can swap the hand, the racket into your other hand. This is a great activity at helping you start to use to, uh, to engage your abs in the shot. So you can do this activity, you can practice it. Other activities you can do is just every time you hit, you draw, you see, you can go catch. And every time, just get used to catch. Or if you don't like to catch, you can just go by my side. Yeah, so every time we're lifting the legs and pushing the racket round. Hopefully that will really help. So we've gone through the forehand. Now, if we look at the science of learning, it would be we don't want too much information. Now, people who have too much information, when they get to a pressure situation, what quite frequently happens is they break down they've got too many things going on in their head so in the world of coaching we try to create analogies now analogies are ways of breaking this down to make it nice and simple okay so I'm gonna give you one that can maybe help you at home so we're gonna try and put this all together that goes like this so we go ready position so ready position we go from here into Hold, draw the C, hit catch. So ready position. Hold, draw the C, hit catch. Ready position. Hold, draw the C, hit catch. One more time. Ready position. Hold, draw the C, hit catch. Now I want you to try and learn that. Learn it off by heart. Uh, and every time you play, rather than looking at every single stage, practice the stages, I want you to try and use the analogy, which is hold, draw the C, hit catch. Yep. Use the analogy to really, really help you with your game. One more time. Ready position. Hold, draw the C, hit catch. Good luck with it. <laughs>